musical notes can have the same name if they are separated by an octave. So an octave is an interval going from here to here. If we're musicians, then we'll know that la and la are the same note. They're one octave apart. So an octave corresponds to a pitch having exactly double the frequency. So that means if the lower note is 200 hertz, then the upper note will be double that, 400 hertz. And an octave above that will be double 400, so 800 hertz. And this is why, as we move up the scale, the musical notes get, they get different distances apart. So if we look at the, con the note called concert A, for example, which has been standardized at 440 hertz, then if we go up one octave from concert A, we'll have an A with a frequency of 880 hertz. So one octave corresponds to a doubling or a halving in frequency if we're going down. Suppose the note middle C has a frequency of 256 hertz. This isn't exactly accurate, but it's accurate enough for our purposes. Calculate the frequency of the C that is one octave above middle C. So how is this going to change? We know that one octave corresponds to a doubling of the frequency. We know that the frequency of our starting note, middle C, is 256 hertz. So to move one octave up, we just double it. 256 times two is 512 hertz. So that means that the difference between these two notes, the distance between middle C and the C above, is 256 hertz. So there are 256 hertz in between that, these two notes. Calculate the frequency of the C, that is two octaves above middle C. Now, at first we might think, well, there are 256 between these first two Cs, so surely there's going to be 256 hertz between these next two Cs. But that's not quite right. If we move up 256 hertz from this C, we'll actually end up at the musical note G, which is halfway in between two Cs if we look at the frequency. So in fact, what we need to do is we need to move up one octave from here. And when we move up an octave, we double the frequency. 512 hertz times two is 1024 hertz. If we were to add 512 to 256, which is the interval between these two Cs, then we would not in fact get the next C. We would get one of the harmonic series or one of the elements of the harmonic series. But that's more sort of advanced acoustics. So I'll leave it here for now. A student uses an oscilloscope, which of course is a device for measuring the wavelength or frequency of waves, to measure the wavelength of two musical notes in the same medium. So they're not traveling at different speeds and we don't need to worry about what they're traveling through. If two notes are one octave apart, how will their wavelengths differ? If we're trying to relate frequency and wavelength, then what equations do we know to do that? Well, there's one that we're, we keep coming back to is V equals F lambda. And in fact, we can use that here as well. If the two sound waves are both traveling in the same medium, that means that V is going to be a constant number. So that means that frequency times wavelength for the first wave will equal the frequency times wavelength for the second wave. If the two notes are one octave apart, how will that change their wavelengths? Well, we know that a difference of one octave corresponds to a frequency doubling or halving if we're going back the other way. And so if F1, for example, is double F2, but we know that this condition has to hold true, then we can see that lambda one will need to be half of lambda two in order to keep the equation correct. So if the two waves travel through the same medium, they'll have the same velocity. That's an important part of the question because if they're traveling through different media, then their wavelengths will depend on the speed of sound in that medium. So from our equation, V equals F lambda, that means that the higher note, the note that is one octave above the other, will have a shorter wavelength by a factor of exactly one half.